Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we will be discussing on the radial nerve. The radial nerve arises from the brachial plexus and its fibers originate from C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1. It arises from the posterior cord, which arises from the posterior divisions from each of the three trunks. It is the largest branch of the brachial plexus. At the level of the axilla, the radial nerve lies posterior to the axillary artery. At the level of the arm, it enters the posterior compartment of the arm under the teres major. It passes between the long and medial heads of the triceps and winds around the spiral groove of the humerus. It is accompanied by the profunda brachii artery. It pierces the lateral intermuscular septum to enter the anterior compartment of the arm from the posterior compartment. At the level of the elbow, it descends into the forearm between the brachialis medially and the brachioradialis laterally. It causes anterior to the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and divides into its terminal deep and superficial branches at this level. At the forearm, the superficial branch courses towards the wrist lateral to the radial artery. It lies beneath the brachioradialis and enters the hand, dividing into the dorsal digital cutaneous branches. The deep branch enters the extensor compartment through the supinator muscle and becomes the posterior interosseous nerve. It passes between the heads of the supinator muscle to enter the posterior compartment of the forearm. It terminates at the level of the wrist joint and supplies the extensors of the wrist, thumb and fingers. Sensory branches to the interosseous membrane and the articulation between the radius ulna arises from the deep branch as well. Motor supply of the radial nerve includes the elbow, wrist and finger extensors and sensory supply to the dorsal aspect of the thumb, index and middle fingers, cutaneous sensation to the posterior aspect of the forearm. The musculocutaneous nerve provides sensory supply to much of the radial surface of the forearm. Indications for radial nerve blockade include post-operative analgesia in radial nerve territory surgery in association with general anesthesia or more proximal short-acting plexus block, analgesia for procedures on the lateral radial side of the hand and forearm. Radial block can be used for procedures on the base of the thumb. Supplementation of incomplete proximal block in combination with musculocutaneous block for creation of forearm arterial venous fistulas for dialysis. Digital nerve blocks for finger surgery. Radial nerve block. Follow the general measures as in the brachial plexus block videos. The radial nerve can be blocked at the level of the brachial plexus. At the mid humeral level, place the patient supine, abduct the shoulder to 90 degrees with the elbow flexed. Divide the humerus into thirds, marking the junction of the upper and middle thirds, which is the point of insertion of the deltoid into the humerus. Palpate the brachial artery. The radial nerve is below and lateral to the brachial artery where it lies on the posterior surface of the humerus in the spiral groove. Angle the needle proximally towards the axilla, medial to the artery, to the medial aspect of the humerus. Once extension of the wrist and fingers occurs on nerve stimulation, manipulate the needle until the stimulating current is between 0.3 and 0.5 mA. After aspiration, 8 to 10 mL of LA is injected in 4 to 5 mL aliquots. Ultrasound technique will be similar as an ultrasound guided axillary block. At the level of the elbow, with the arm supinated, palpate the groove between the brachioradialis and biceps tendon, 1.5 to 2 cm proximal to the elbow crease. Direct a 22 gauge 50 mm stimulating needle towards the lateral epicondyle of the humerus inserting about 2 cm lateral to the biceps tendon. The nerve is usually found at a depth of 2 to 4 cm anterior to the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. 
position the needle to achieve optimal motor stimulation at 0.3 to 0.5 mA, thumb extension is a must. 5 to 10 mL of LA can be injected in a fan-wise direction as the needle is withdrawn. The musculocutaneous nerve can also be blocked at the elbow between the biceps and the brachioradialis. Ultrasound technique. Use an in-plane approach using a high-frequency linear probe. Place the probe 3 to 5 cm proximal to the lateral epicondyle. The radial nerve is a round oval hypoechoic structure about 1 to 2 cm deep which wraps around to the anterior side of the elbow to sit between the brachialis and the brachioradialis. Inject 5 mL of local anesthetic around the nerve. At the level of the wrist, nerve block at the wrist is effectively a superficial field block of the terminal sensory branches. Nerve stimulation is not used as there is no motor component to the superficial radial nerve. 3 mL of local anesthetic is injected along the lateral border of the radial artery, extending dorsally to include the area delineated by the extensor tendons of the thumb, 5 cm proximal to the anatomical snuff box. 1 to 3 mL of local anesthetic can be used to block the superficial radial nerve as it emerges from below the brachioradialis, about 2.5 cm proximal to the anatomical snuff box bundle, as 3 to 4 bubbles sitting subcutaneously. Radial nerve damage and its clinical signs. It can be damaged by compression against the upper humerus, such as in Saturday night or crutch palsy, or from pressure exerted by an arterial tourniquet. The radial nerve is vulnerable to damage in mid-humeral fractures. Posterior interosseous branch may be traumatized in injuries to the head of the radius. Symptoms and signs of injury include sensory loss and paresthesia at the radial nerve territory, and it may be confined to a relatively small area on the dorsum of the hand due to overlap of innervation. Wrist drop due to paralysis of the extensor muscles. If the damage to the nerve has occurred below the elbow, then the functional preservation of extensor carpi radialis longus will minimize the wrist drop. These are my references. Thank you.